Hello everybody, my name is William, and welcome back to another Roblox. I just ran straight into a wall, this is a scuffed intro, but anyways, welcome back to another Roblox Bee Swarm Simulator video, where today I would like to give you guys sort of a guide on what is the best event bee, and sort of an order to get the event bees in, because there is a there is a good order to get them in so that way you can waste absolutely no tickets and no time. So yeah, I think a lot of like noob players will find this very helpful. Before this video starts, I would like to quickly apologize for my last video on the other update leaks. Some people are saying they're true. Some people are saying they're fake. Um, I'm going to leave the video up because I feel like it leans more to the true side because all of the leaks kind of add up sort of. And so people have been telling me that Jillyfesh was just saying that they were fake to get like out of trouble with on it and stuff like that. But I don't know. It's all kind of a mess at the moment, but I will leave the video up. I have no intentions of misleading anyone. And I really hope I did not just accidentally cause a massive ruckus in the Bee Swarm community. Don't think I did. However, I'm pretty sure they are most likely real. So the leaks kind of just overall add up, so I'm gonna go with their most likely real. Back to the video. So event bees are purchased within the ticket tent right here next to the hive slots. And so you have the puppy bee for 500 tickets, the photon bee for 500 tickets, you have the tabby bee for 500 tickets, and you have the festive bee for 500 tickets, and then you have the crimson bee and the cobalt bee, which are both 250 tickets. So it kind of adds up to 500 tickets because they kind of work together sort of. Like if you activate the cobalt ability and you have the crimson bee, in your hive with the cobalt bee in your hive. It will also activate the crimson bee ability, so they kind of, like, bounce off of each other, sort of. And I guess we'll just go in order here. So here is the puppy bee. So the puppy bee is right here. Hold on, let me just find it. Honestly, the puppy bee isn't very useful unless it's gifted. So why I say that is because if it's not gifted, you don't really have much stuff from this. It gives you the fetch ability, which will create sort of like a little ball on the field that you can kick around, and it'll give you treats the higher the combo you get. A combo is like, you kick the ball, puppy bee hits it back to you and you kick it again, then you get some treats. And it also collects pollen and ability tokens, so it is nice to have, but it's compared to the other event bees you could have, it's mainly useless unless it's gifted. And why I say that is because if it's gifted, you get 20% bond from treats, and that's overall pretty useful. So, personally, I would say get the puppy bee... Mm, you know, I'll, I'll list them in order after I'm done talking about which one's the best one. So let's go through these real quick. Here we have the photon bee, which honestly is my favorite event event bee because it just looks sick and honestly the abilities are actually pretty helpful. So the gifted hive bonus is actually really good and it's 5% instant conversion. So honestly this is a really good gifted uh, gifted event bee. So the photon bee has infinite energy. That's the main like thing about this that you're going to want in early game because your bees go to sleep a lot in early game. So if you have the photon bee with its infinite energy it will never go to sleep Um, but that doesn't outlie all the other things on the other event bees that I'm going to talk about real Quick. So it has the ability beam storm, which at an early level is really good because basically it just it fires off 25 25 plus 2 per level uh, 25 beams into the field from the sky. So it collects and doubles all the pollen from that specific little patch. Like each square is like, I guess, a patch of pollen. And so each laser will collect the entire thing. It will, you know how it like goes down, 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 and down, right? It goes straight to the bottom, like immediately. So at early game, that's a lot of pollen and it doubles it. So that's even more pollen. It also gives you the haste ability, which honestly haste everybody. You just gotta have haste. This is pretty useful. So that's, that's definitely a good thing that it has haste, but mainly the beam storm for lower level players is what we're looking at here. Next up, we have the Tabby Bee. So the Tabby Bee has 28 energy, which isn't infinite, so we'll just ignore that. I don't know why I mentioned that, but the Gifted Hive bonus is 50% critical power, which 50% critical power is actually pretty handy. Um, so in like every single Hive color, you'll need this, but that's not the main point of this. Although that 50% critical power is really good. So the ability Scratch is what we're looking at here. Why exactly? Is because it goes with the ability Tabby Love. They kind of work together. So as you can see up here I have something called tabby love so this ability right here every time you collect one of those tokens it will give you plus one tabby love and this is a permanent buff by the way it stacks up to a thousand times which is I'll explain why that's OP in just a second or well right now so if you have a thousand tabby love you get a thousand percent more gather amount from tabby bee which is a ton and you get one thousand percent more tabby bee conversion amount which is actually for early game players insane and and you get a thousand percent pollen from scratch and that is an extremely important thing about tabby bee because scratch collects seven pollen it adds on one pollen every level it has right so plus one pollen for every level so like if i have a level 16 tabby bee it'll add 16 onto that seven so yeah collect seven 
pollen from three lines of floor flowers. So like three lines is in like, hold on, let me go back to the field. So one line is right here. So this is, this is four flowers in one line. This is four flowers in one line. And this is four flowers in one line, right? Well, it's more like just, they're all stuck together like that, but you get the point. My bad, I got this backwards. So it's one, two, and three. And if the tabby bee is gifted, every single scratch ability hits a critical hit. And that is, that is actually really useful if you're like in the lower game or even mid game that can be insane that can fill your backpack in like two hits but this is if you have a thousand times tabby love so tabby love stacks up so you start at zero and then every single tabby love token you collect it goes up by one so that right there is a huge thing for tabby b next up we have the festive b which honestly for end game is really good so festive b at the end game is extremely good because the stats are overall nice right so the stats are good but i'm mainly looking at this festive gift ability right here. So basically a festive gift grants a player random gifts including treats, honey, and festive blessing. So what festive blessing is, is it's a hundred percent, yes, 100 percent instant conversion for 10 seconds. And I'm pretty sure it also multiplies like your convert rate by 1.25 or something, or no, my bad, it doubles your convert rate, sorry. And the higher the level the festive bee is, the, the better the gifts you'll get. So like gifts are like treats or like maybe crafted items or something like that. And actually, I've gotten two festive beans. Festive beans from festive gifts. And if the festive bee is gifted, it will give you another, like, buff similar to festive blessing called festive cheer. And what festive cheer does, or no, sorry, bees miss cheer, my bad. And what bees miss cheer does is it will buff the move speed of your bees by 1.5. It will multiply them by 1.5, and it will give you two times pollen, or also 10 seconds. So if you have it gifted, it'll give you festive blessing and festive cheer guaranteed. But if you don't have it gifted every single festive gift will at least include festive blessings sometimes it doesn't rarely it doesn't but most of the time if it's a decently uh, high level like i'd say level nine even it will almost always give you festive blessing the honey mark ability and the red bomb plus ability don't really matter i mean they are kind of useful for earlier game uh earlier level players in the game honey mark is kind of useful but and eh, mostly we're looking at the festive gift part which for end game is super good but for mid game or lower level players is isn't really that handy because in 10 seconds you're not about to collect like 12 billion pollen which sounds like a lot but in end game it's nothing and so moving on we have the crimson and the cobalt bee which is the same price as the tabby bee the festive bee the puppy bee the photon bee etc all that um so the crimson and cobalt bee kind of go together i guess we'll start off with the crimson bee i guess so the gifted hive bonus is 10 percent instant red conversion which can be pretty useful um but we're not looking at that at the moment that's not that useful for early game or mid game and the ability red pulse fires a pulse that hops between your red bees so like every red bee you have a pulse will like hop over and over and over um collecting pollen right it will add on 10 percent more pollen per level the power increases per hop so the more red bees you have the more the more uh pollen red pulse will collect and if you also have the cobalt bee in your hive the crimson bee red pulse ability will also fire off a blue pulse which does the same thing just with blue bees so it hops over blue bees and stuff like that and it collects mainly blue pollen as the red pulse collects mainly red pollen. The red bomb sink allows red bombs to collect white flowers for 30 seconds. If blue bomb sink is active, applies to blue flowers as well. So pretty much both the bees, they kind of mirror off each other. So if you have both of them in your hive at an early level, it is actually really good. So the cobalt bee is literally just the opposite of the crimson bee color wise, but not ability wise. They have the exact same ability. So I'm not going to need to explain this over again because I don't want to waste any time here. Um, but pretty much it's just everything Thing the uh, crimson bee does just with blue pollen instead and then last but not least we have the gummy bee and this gummy bee right here this bee is made of gumdrops goo and a lot of sugar so this glorious this glorious bee right here gets his own little spot up here for 2500 gumdrops you can go ahead and get yourself a gummy bee and yes a gummy bee is an event bee i actually got it from the gummy bear event but that's a story for a live stream i'll, I'll talk about that on a live stream if you guys want me to live stream more often i will leave in the comments comments below if you want to see some live streams. But anyways, so the Gummy Bee has a gifted hive bonus of 5% honey per pollen, which is actually pretty decent. That's actually half decent. That's like the Photon Bee, but not as good. I'd say the 5% instant conversion is better. Now, the Gummy Bee is very unique. There is absolutely no bee like this. Pretty much, its abilities are Gumdrop Barrage and Glop. Now, what Gumdrop Barrage does is it will launch pretty much a Gumdrop, and flowers covered in goo will grant a bonus amount of honey. So, like the amount of pollen you collect from the flower 
will also be instantly converted into honey. So like the amount that you collect off of the flower, right? So I actually have a trail of goo as you can see this. I have a trail of goo because of my gummy boots. Oh, there's a festive gift. That's it right there. Boom. See, I get a bunch of rewards right here. Very helpful. And also I get that 100% instant conversion. I probably should have displayed that, but it would have taken too long for the festive gift to show up. And I don't think you guys are going to want to wait around for that. So pretty much what Gumdrop Barrage is this. So when I use a gumdrop, boom, look, there's a bunch of goo on the field now. And that's about the same as the gumdrop barrage. It does the same. So it's like a free gumdrop every few seconds. And now what glob does is I'm going to have to get a glob token and show you it. Um, But it's like this. Uh, here's gumdrop barrage. See, look, it's exactly like a uh, exactly like a gumdrop, like a normal one. But where is glob? Glob is somewhere here. My capacity actually filled up. Hold on. Let me quickly empty this. Oh, here is the glob ability. See that? It just exploded into a bunch of goo on one part of the field. So if you have like the porcelain dipper, that can actually be pretty good if you stand in the middle of it. But as you can see, I get a bunch of goo and a bunch of extra honey. So glob covers 49 surrounding flowers in goo. If it's gifted, it covers 81 flowers instead. So that's a pretty big buff. Did I mention the gummy bees conversion? Look at that 700 honey in four seconds, right? So that's like 700 pollen converted. Also, you got to add on all of your like buffs on that. So yeah, it's way more than 700, but that's at the base at 700 without all of your like multipliers and stuff like that. However, as you can tell, the tabby bee definitely converts more 375,000 and my gummy bee only converts 167,000. So the tabby bee does have a win there. All right, now for the list in order. So if I am looking at this from a lower level perspective, right? From like a noob perspective and you want to get your first event bee for let's say 500 tickets because that's what they mostly cost. And yeah, the crimson and cobalt, you could buy both of them with 500 tickets. But uh, yeah, so personally, everybody else is going to have their own different opinion on this. So personally, the first event bee that I would go with would probably be the tabby bee. And a lot of other people are going to agree with me, but then a lot of people are going to disagree. But if you have 500 tickets and you're getting your first event bee, I'd say go with the tabby bee because the tabby love over time adds up and it can be extremely useful. At first, it may not seem that good, but just give it a little time and stack up your tabby love and it will do a ton more than you think it would. And then the next event bee that you should probably get would probably be the Photon Beak because of Beam Storm. And then after getting that, you should get the Crimson and the Cobalt Bee. Well, sorry, I just pointed at them backwards. The Crimson Bee and the Cobalt Bee. And then get the Festive Bee and then the Puppy Bee. Get the Puppy Bee last because the Puppy Bee is not as useful as the other ones and it's going to be a waste of time if you get the Puppy Bee before any of the other ones. But also, I forgot to include the Gummy Bee in on this tier list, but I'd say I'm not going to include this one because it's gumdrops and not tickets. So that's like a complete completely different currency, so it wouldn't really be that difficult to get the gummy bee if you've purchased something with tickets, because that's not really going to affect your gumdrops, so yeah. Well, I mean, you can buy gumdrops with tickets, so if you were to buy the gumdrops entirely with tickets to get the gummy bee, it's 830 tickets, which is a lot of tickets, so honestly, I mean, you could save for that, and you could get the gummy bee first, which honestly wouldn't be the best idea. It would be better to get the tabby bee, then the gummy bee, and then the photon bee, and then the list that I said earlier. Honestly, I'd say just get the gumdrops from mobs and crafting instead of getting the gumdrops from tickets because tickets, it's expensive and honestly a waste of tickets. So yeah, I hope you all found this guide very helpful. Please leave in the comments below your opinion on these and uh, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you all in the next Roblox Beast Worm Simulator video or any other video that I publish on my channel. And I'll see you all later. Goodbye!